what to know about detailing drainage mat with stucco. As an industry, we're going through some pretty serious growing pains with respect to providing sufficient drainage behind stucco and adhered stone claddings. Up until 2018, the building codes required that we use two layers of WRB, or water resistive barrier, behind stucco. A lot of people assume that the second layer is for redundancy in case the first layer fails, but that's not actually the case. The code calls that second layer a WRB, but that's not actually what it's doing. What it's doing is preventing the stucco, which goes on wet, from sticking to the first layer of WRB. It's a bond break, and including it means that we get a tiny space for drainage and drying between our water control membrane and the stucco. Now, back in the day, we didn't need the second layer because we were using old school asphalt impregnated felts for our water control membrane, and those membranes were heavy. We called them 15 pound felt or 30 pound felt because they actually weighed 15 pounds or 30 pounds per 100 square feet. Anyway, these membranes also had a very high rag content and when stucco was applied over them, they'd get wet and they'd swell. And then as the stucco cured, they'd dry out and debond from the back of the stucco leaving us with a small gap for drainage and drying. Our new building papers are much more dimensionally stable. They're actually better products, but they don't swell up like they used to, and so we need a second layer to get that same space. The thing is, what we've found is that the space we get from the second layer of WRB doesn't give us enough drainage and drying in a lot of very common situations and our walls are rotting as a result. The problem is worse, as you might imagine, in rainy climates, those that receive more than 20 inches of rain a year, and for tall buildings that get exposed to more water. The 2021 versions of the International Building Code and the International Residential Code both include provisions for more drainage behind stucco claddings in rainy climates. That said, the new provisions are very political and have been influenced heavily by materials manufacturers trying to use the rules to make it more difficult to use their competitors' products. Now, that's a bit beyond our scope today. The point is that a lack of drainage behind stucco and adhered stone claddings is a known problem, and the codes are moving in the right direction on this, if not perfectly. In the meantime, if you're in a climate that receives more than 20 inches of rain per year, I recommend using a drainage mat behind stucco. The code permits this, but doesn't currently require this. A drainage mat is a material that provides a medium for drainage. They usually run about a dollar or $1.50 a square foot, which is to say that they're not free, but they're not terribly expensive either. Stucco with a drainage mat is more expensive than stucco with two layers of building paper, but it's still a lot less expensive than a masonry cladding, for example. There are a few different kinds of drainage mat, and they're available in varying thicknesses. Generally, it's helpful to pick one that's fairly thin because we don't want to use something so big that it messes up our transitions and returns at windows and stuff. About a quarter of an inch is great. This is the mesh kind of drainage mat, and you'll notice that it has a facing on one side of the mesh. You can get meshes with no facing, but the facing is helpful for stucco applications because we don't want the stucco to clog the mesh and defeat the whole purpose by inhibiting drainage. There are also drainage mats specifically designed for use with stucco that have a fiberglass lath already attached. These are really cool and I'm just dying to use one on a project. So let's talk about how you might go about including the drainage mat. Graphically, it's just a line on the drawing in front of the WRB. What's neat about it, but also kind of surprising, is that it really doesn't need to be detailed. It's literally just a spacer. We're including it to offset the cladding, the stucco, from the water control membrane. So there's no need to lap it into the stucco terminations or anything like that. This is what drainage mat looks like on a single family home. Notice how the drainage mat just dies at the edge of the window there. It's just a spacer. The J termination for the stucco will come after. 
and it should be installed as though the drainage mat weren't even there. This is the same condition on a different building, but now the J termination and part of the lath is attached. It's entirely over top of the drainage mat, which is the mesh kind, but you can't see the mesh because it's facing inward. The point is, you don't have to lap the drainage mat into the cladding terminations. Let the drainage mat be for drainage and let the cladding be the cladding. Here's that same condition, but now the lath has been installed. Stucco installers, by the way, do not like to do this typically. Both this detail in particular and just including drainage mat in general. Many of them don't like drainage mat because they're just not used to it. It's not very hard to install. You literally just tack it up on the wall. It requires no detailing. But it can be hard to get people to do things that they're not accustomed to do, even if the architect has drawn it, even if the owner has agreed to pay for it, and even if the general contractor will buy it. It's a bit of a case of the tail wagging the dog on some of these hundred million dollar projects where you've got these enormous developers and general contractors and architects who are all on board with this and it still ends up being difficult to get a, get a stucco installer to bid the job with the drainage mat. Residentially, there tends to be a bit more of a jack of all trades mentality and more flexibility from the subcontractors, but getting drainage mat included can be a real challenge even though it's not labor intensive or particularly expensive. The thing is, in rainy climates, it's just not worth the risk to exclude it. Providing drainage and drying behind your cladding is the single easiest, lowest cost way to reduce the risk of water-related failures on your building.